Of all the hauling ships in Star Citizen, perhaps none are more iconic than the Drake Caterpillar. Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back to An Architect Reviews, the series in which I utilize my professional skills in the field of architecture to examine a ship or location in the digital realm. Today I'm taking a look at the Drake Caterpillar, currently Star Citizen's biggest hauling ship until the hull series from MISC comes online. In the course of this video, I'm going to take you guys from stem to stern, exterior to interior, showing you guys all of its features and exploring its successes and shortcomings. Along the way, I hope to provide some feedback and solutions for CIG, but I think it's also a great opportunity to explore some concepts and ideas in architectural design or just design in general. The Caterpillar has been a ship I've been wanting to review for some time, not just because it can make you a starship loads of money, but also because its versatility makes it capable of doing much more than just hauling cargo. It can even defend itself against pirates as long as you have the right tools. Much like in the real world these days if you don't have a VPN to protect you against internet pirates, which is why I hope you'll consider using the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN, to defend your personal information. I've even got my own portal, nordvpn.com slash morphologist. I've legit used them for years after switching from a crappy free web browser version that only worked half the time. They've been a lifesaver for me, making it possible to reliably access important IP restricted websites such as the IRS or Home Depot while I work from abroad. I've even started using their app to watch streaming services on my iPad since for some reason they restrict service to Taiwan. All this on top of hiding my real IP address from would-be pirates. So don't be like these guys, get the right tools with NordVPN. Right now they're offering a two year plan with a huge discount when you go to nordvpn.com slash morphologist and use my code morphologist, which will also give you an extra month free. And if you don't like it, you can always get your money back with their 30 day money back guarantee. So secure your unguarded rear hatch with NordVPN today. Shoot, I know someone's gonna take that out of context. For me, what makes the Caterpillar so iconic are a few things. First of all is its very unusual asymmetry. Now, asymmetry isn't uncommon in science fiction, we've seen a couple of them, but it's not common that it actually succeeds in being good looking. In my opinion, this off-center command detachable ship is really well done because somehow CIG's designers still strike a balance between both sides of the ship. I think what makes it successful is that the wing opposite to the command ship visually balances in a way that makes it convincing that this could perhaps physically balance the ship, bringing the center of rotation of the ship's mass to where it should be if both sides were symmetrical. Well, that might not necessarily be true, at least visually they pull it off. But one other thing that I really love about this ship, and Drake ships in general, is the utilitarian nature of their engines, how they are exposing all of the mechanics that make it work. This sells its believability, but I think it also makes the ship feel more muscular, more powerful, and that goes a long way in the success, I think, of a ship design. The engine cones themselves are reminiscent of perhaps something you might have seen on the Saturn V rocket, for example. What I think is extraordinarily successful about the Drake Caterpillar is its modularity. In design in general, and this includes architecture, adaptability for future technologies is a core principle of designing good buildings. You don't want to design a space that is too exclusive to the times as utilities and technologies can change and the user's desired use case of the space can also change. The segments along the length of the Caterpillar are supposedly replaceable, meaning that a user could change the ship to their desired length or purpose, repurposing a module for example to something like another turret or a mobile deployable generator for a homestead or perhaps even a scientific lab. The ship's landing gear also are cool. I mean, it makes it look like a caterpillar and that's definitely where it gets its name from. But what about the ship's interior? How successful is it? And does it continue the Drake tradition of utilitarian design? Like many other ships and places in Star Citizen, the scale of the Drake Caterpillar can only truly be appreciated when comparing it to the human scale. 
Walking on the ground going up to it really gives you an understanding of just how big it is. But unless you want the user to feel overwhelmed by the scale of a thing, oppressed in other words, this is something you might commonly find in oppressive, brutalist architecture, the scale of spaces on the interior and their entrances can make an impression of how cozy or uncomfortable a ship feels. If Drake has a design guide, which I very much suspect it does, it would probably say that spaces inside Drake's ships need only be designed for as big as they only need to be. Never more, never less. This is very much the approach of an engineer, and in some cases, architects as well, depending on the use case. The lift room itself acts as a sort of foyer in this case to introduce the user to what to expect on the rest of the ship, and the impression it leaves me with is pure utilitarianism. And that's something that I actually quite like. It reminds me of being in a house or a building that has yet to have the wall finishes put up. There's something really cool about the feeling, and in some cases not having gypsum board or some sort of wall finish to cover up the studs or structure can make a space feel bigger than it actually is, and this I think works in favor of Drake because their spaces are only scaled as big as a human needs to have. This design philosophy you'll see is repeated into even the most intimate space on the ship, the crew quarters, where many crew members will be spending their bunk time and off time in general. It kind of leaves the impression of being a fixer-upper, a place that has potential to make it your own, and I think that's really okay. Speaking of the design of the space though, having the table in the center of the room is a classic and excellent design strategy. This serves as the sort of hearth of the space where people converse and gather. Hearth and gathering spaces are best centered around high traffic areas, which means that you put the other program, the bedroom and the bathroom and kitchen, off to the periphery. These spaces, by the way, are absolutely minimalist, just like everywhere else we've seen so far on the Caterpillar. They're only as big as they need to be and serve a function, pure and simple. And I think this also touches on another part of architectural design, or design in general, that many people, including myself, appreciate. And that's honest design, the act of not trying to deceive the user by covering things up or making things appear that they perform a different function than they already do. Think a fake fireplace, or a fake window, or something like that. Those can sometimes leave users feeling frustrated. Drake takes the approach of just being honest and open with everything on the ship, everything's exposed. But I think the exposed nature of the interior also speaks to the user that Drake targets in their lore, and that's somebody who lives out on the edge. It makes a lot of sense to leave things exposed because that sort of individual doesn't want everything covered up as they'll probably need to maintain them themselves. Just having panels in the way is not going to be helpful. They're not really maybe concerned with pretty places, they're concerned with keeping the ship going and keeping the occupants alive. One thing that really disappointed me and confused me though about my first trip in the Caterpillar was how this corridor just off the entrance leads you into the engineering room instead of what I expected to be a ladder or a stairway that would bring me up to the command deck so I could begin flying the ship. Consequently, it's also where you can access the lower turret. I think that this would probably be better access to the hallway or maybe the upper deck as opposed to the engineering room. It just seems like a strange choice. Which leads me to say that one of the less successful things about the Caterpillar, I think, is its circulation strategy. Not being able to directly and easily access the command deck when you enter a ship could put you at risk if you need to take off in a hurry. Getting there directly is more desirable, but at least it's not as bad as the Starfarer. <laughs> but that aside, circulation aside, it's a really cool space, and I love that they designed the engines for the ship to look a lot like big industrial diesel engines you might find in, say, a actual ship. It makes it feel believable. And the console itself is really neat. I could visualize an engineer working here to keep the engines online during a fight or a getaway from pirates, for example. You'll also find an alternate circulation path in this space, which I find is really neat, and I wish we had more of this in Star Citizen in general. Having access corridors or Jeffrey's tubes are really cool and gives you a different route to get to a place if one of them is cut off. This is probably better for safety as well when you think about Star Citizen having fire on ships at some point in the future. Now if we want to get to the upper deck, there's a stairway directly attached to the engineering room that leads us up to the command deck and some other program. 
But one of the other strange things I want to highlight about this design, and maybe one thing that I don't find to be particularly successful, is just how much space the stairway actually takes up. For such a utilitarian focused design, I would have expected to see something more akin to what you might see on modern day military ships. Sure, something like a cross between stairs and a ladder. They're extremely vertical so they can take up the absolute minimal amount of space possible while still being safe enough to navigate through even heavy seas. On the top of the staircase, we find ourselves in another corridor. To the right is the very cool tractor beam control and observatory that was on the wing that we saw in the earlier part of this video when examining the exterior, while to the left is the direction we take to go to the command deck. Our first stop is going to be the observatory slash tractor beam control though. This is one of my favorite spaces on the ship and I think that's because it's one of the only spaces on the ship where you can truly appreciate the scale of the ship you're in by looking out onto it, but it's also a great place to view the outside world from, to appreciate the landscape you might be flying above or the planet or moon you might be flying near. You know, I often lament that there just aren't enough spaces like this on ships in general in Star Citizen, a place to appreciate the outside world. Too many of them are just focused inward with very few viewports outside. I mean, think, I'm getting a better view out of this than I get out of the 600i, for Pete's sake, which is supposedly a high-end luxury yacht. So my feedback in general for not just the Caterpillar, but all ships in general, is to have more of this. More ways to appreciate the world around us, which is becoming more and more incredible with each passing patch. But we can't stare out the window all day, we've got other places to visit aboard this ship. So let's take a look at the rear section of the upper deck. Just to the left of the hallway we came up, we'll find the EVA room, but then we'll also find another corridor that leads us to the rear section of the ship. Here we have access to the ship's server room, or the ship's computer rather, that in future is going to give us the ability to modify our ship to be partially controlled by AI. It should also, I believe, give us the ability to transport commodities that are digital in general between jump points. So the ship's not going to just haul general cargo, it can also potentially haul digital cargo as well. But this is also where we have access to the power plant. Actually, this might be the quantum drive. I can't remember exactly which one this is. So it's either qu the quantum drive or the power plant, one of those. It'd be really nice to have a label or something to tell me what this is. Beyond that, we find ourselves in a rear space that has more component access. Right now, there really isn't much to do back here because it hasn't been updated to the new component metrics that was recently added I think probably last year to a lot of ships. This ship is still in need of a pass with the new metrics, so we're probably going to see this entire space reworked to fit the current modules in Star Citizen, as they are going to be physicalized in the very near future. This is also consequently the access ladder point to the engineering room that we saw earlier on the lower deck. Returning to the center hallway though, we still need to visit the forward section of the upper and lower decks. We've not yet visited the cargo pods, so we'll go to the command deck soon. Don't worry guys, we're getting there. Stepping down into the EVA access room though, you'll notice that this space feels somewhat dated in terms of Star Citizen ships. The big thing that's missing from here that needs to be added in their next pass is probably A, an actually usable exterior hatch, because that doesn't work, but B, a place to store your suits. There is no space in here to store a suit, nor is there a way to separate the access to the EVA hatch and the forward module, which means that if you had this room decompressed, you would have access cut off then to the actual cargo modules and its upper catwalk. This upper catwalk is actually fairly useful. It allows you to control the side doors and lifts, but also gives you access to the forward modules should these cargo holds be completely full of cargo. And yes, they will fill all the way to the roof, completely blocking off access to the lower doors. I don't really find this to be a design flaw. I think that this really maximizes the amount of cargo you can carry aboard the ship, which makes sense once again with Drake's utilitarian approach to design. Here I think it's now finally worth pointing out the color scheme and choice. I really like the OD greens, yellows, and blacks. It gives it a very industrial feeling, which again fits with their design style. As a quick side note though, that door to my right there does actually lead to the crew compartment we saw earlier, so that's why we're not going through there. One of the really cool features of the Caterpillar that I particularly like are the folding doors that open up the cargo modules. These are supposedly lifts that go down to the ground allowing you to roll on very heavy pieces of cargo and potentially small vehicles. 
but they also just look really cool. To be able to open sideways like this invites some really cool shenanigans like getting a group of guys with rail guns or rocket launchers, you know, shoulder mounted ones, to attack somebody who wasn't expecting a hauling ship to have enough armament to protect itself. So the ship, again, is one of those ships that allows you to do more than what is initially advertised. Like what I said at the beginning, it's not just a hauling ship. If you've got the right tools, it can actually do a lot more, and that's what makes it so much fun to fly. Skipping ahead to the forwardmost module, each one of the modules in this ship except for the forwardmost module are identical at the moment. This module is unique in two ways. First is that it actually has a door that opens forward, so it allows you to potentially load things um, forward of the ship, but also perhaps to have people launch stuff out of the front of the ship through this, which is again a fun way to use it, um, but it also actually has the turret access on the upper deck. The upper deck though can only be accessed through the upper catwalk in the adjacent module, which is a bit of a strange choice for that particular module. I suspect that they may need to do a little bit of a reworking in the future just in case somebody decides to detach or attach a different type of module just adjacent to the forward one with the turret. The turret itself is nothing special. It does have size 4 weapons, which are pretty good in Star Citizen, meaning that it can defend itself if ships get close enough to be shot at with it, and it can blow up small ships fairly quickly. The design of it, of course, is very utilitarian, it's very angular, and I like that. No curved panels here, and that's okay. But now it's time to visit something that I'm sure many of you have been itching to see, the command module. What does it feel like to fly this thing, and how well is that space designed? Well, we access it through this airlock, and it has an airlock because, like I said at the beginning, this module is actually detachable as a separate ship. Here there's enough space for a crew of four, with a pilot, co-pilot, and some what looks to be probably engineering consoles towards the rear. Before we take a look closely at how the canopy actually feels though, let's take a look at the lower deck. Down a narrow access ladder, we'll find ourselves in a comfortably sized space for two crew members. The captain, and probably the second in command. Here they have their own showers, their own cooking area, and their own communal eating space. Due to the narrow nature of the space, I think it would actually be kind of comfortable to sleep down here, and I wouldn't mind how exposed the bunks are. Moving forward, we'll find ourselves the exterior access hatch. If you look on the exterior of the ship and you look very closely, you'll actually see a door that will open eventually to give you individual access to the command module once it detaches and lands on its own. For now though, it's not operational. I'm really excited to see this work, but I think they need to do a lot of reworking on the ship before that will actually work itself. Just in front of that though is the tractor beam access control and an additional viewport. Again, somehow this ship is doing a better job of connecting you to the outside world than a luxury yacht. Go figure, Drake is somehow doing it right. I also like how in this space you can even see stuff like insulation, going back to the level of detail in these ships just being incredible. One thing you might miss though if you're not careful is that just adjacent to the ladder is actually a gun rack in this very narrow area. That's actually a cool little addition just in case you need to defend the ship. But alright, alright, you guys want to see how to fly the ship, and what it looks like. That's what we're checking out next. Everything in this ship up until now has felt bare bones and utilitarian, and well, the captain's seat is really no different. It looks like it could be something taken out of a modern military aircraft, to be honest. The flight seat is very basic, but it gets the job done and that's really the theme of the Drake ships you'll find in Star Citizen. In this way, I think that CIG's designers have been very successful in making the ship feel consistent from every single part you experience. The seats, the exterior, the interior, everything is consistent in its tone. And the canopy itself also follows this design style. It reminds me of something like the Millennium Falcon, which by the way, has a really lived in utilitarian feel, much like this ship. I know a lot of people were thinking that the Mercury Star Runner from Crusader was going to be the Millennium Falcon of Star Citizen, but really, I think the Caterpillar is probably the closest thing spiritually to it. It's that very lived in used world experience that I think Star Wars does so well. It's not the shiniest ship in the world, but if you put a few upgrades into it, it can be something truly special. Overall then, I think that the Drake Caterpillar is a raving success. Yeah, it has a lot of circulation issues, I think, but those can maybe be resolved when they do the rework. Adding a hallway to the upper deck or a ladder that directly gives you access to the command module would go a long way to making it a far more useful ship and far more practical in case of emergency. What makes it truly excellent though is its modularity, its ability to adapt to the scenario that you put it into, and 
the ability for it to adapt to the user, depending on what they want to do with the Drake Caterpillar. But what do you guys think? Do you like the Drake Caterpillar, and do you agree or disagree with anything I've said in this video? Let me know down in the comments section below. I really love reading your feedback. And if you guys think I did a good job, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, if I deserve it. And lastly, if you wanted to show some extra support when you get NordVPN, don't forget to go to nordvpn.com slash morphologist and use code morphologist to get that two-year deal plus an extra month free. I've been Morphologist, and I hope to see you guys around the verse.